He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. Um, Reverend Joseph, your host, and I thank you for watching our broadcast today. The name of our show is New Hope. New. There's a, quite a few definitions of new. But as a believer in Jesus, this is the definition I want to use. It's completely different. New. The Bible says in Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope, the God of hope, Jesus Christ, new. It means completely different, that we're no longer relying on our own self but we're relying on the Lord that saved us. New. Hope. Hope in the world is wanting something, believing and wanting something. But hope as a believer is expect that something will happen. So we expect that something will happen because we're relying on the Lord, not wanting it happen, but we're believing that it's going to happen because of the God that created us, the God that we have come to know in a personal way, who makes life a little bit easier uh, because it's not about us, it's about him. Because of Adam and Eve falling into sin, um, the Holy Spirit left. And now when believers come back to Christ, what happens is, is that the Spirit comes in them and they have a peace in the midst of the storm. So if you haven't had Christ come into your life yet and your sins forgiven, you don't know what you're missing. Besides having a new life here on earth with a peace and a joy and a happiness that you never had before inside, you have eternal life. You don't fear death. You know that when you do die, you'll be with the Lord forever. So thank you, Pastor Michael Shahid, for coming on the show today and to sharing um, your story and to bring people hope in, in a world where there actually is no hope. Thank you so much for having me, Reverend. So why don't you start, uh, uh, Pastor, uh, your upbringing, uh, did you go to um, uh, school? Uh, you know, I'm sorry, did you, did you go to church? Did your parents, uh, were they believers? Uh, how was your upbringing, Pastor? Well, I am a third generation minister. My grandfather on my father's side was a traveling evangelist in the Middle East. My family is Middle Eastern uh, Egyptian on my father's side, my mother's side Lebanese. So I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, my father is an ordained minister, was an ordained minister. So I, I've always been to church ever since I was born. So I grew up in church, even the school I attended was a school in a Baptist church in Lebanon, in Beirut, Lebanon, until we moved to the United States in uh, 1976. Um, so I grew up in church, and even in the United States, always attending church. I love the Lord, always involved, loved worshiping, best way that I knew how at that time. Um, so I read my Bible, so I've had all that going on, but the big thing that happened in my life was I always thought that I had to change, even though I had the background that I had, that I had to change before I can accept Jesus in my heart. So I, it was kind of a works-oriented mentality that I had as a teenager and as a little kid. And it wasn't until uh, one of my pastors, when I was 16 years old, he and I were driving around, and we were just talking about that. He asked me, how come you haven't been baptized? I said, well, because I don't feel like I'm good enough yet. I feel like I need to get better. I feel like I need to change more. And he looked at me, and he said, you accept Christ. You let him in, and you let him do the work. He does the changing. You know, for me, it's just to open up my heart, my mind, my body to him. And Pastor, I've uh, met uh, people um, that have been um, 
on on drugs and alcohol and um i shared with them uh about the lord and mm -hmm. um they have uh the same attitude see satan has so many different venues to keep people away from knowing the truth and um they say well i have to clean up my act before i come to the lord but the problem is as an addict you're going to never able to clean up your act because you crave whatever it is whether it's drugs whether it's women whether it's uh well alcohol is a drug but alcohol a gambling whatever it is uh you need to come to jesus as you are because the lord is the only one that could clean clean you up so mm -hmm. uh it, it was good that uh your uh the pastor was sharing with that to you did did that make sense to you or did you still kind of fight it well i totally had an immediate holy spirit recognition light bulb moment when he said that and i came forward the very next sunday in church to publicly profess accepting christ as my savior and was baptized a couple of weeks later and um, that's kept where i truly started begin my journey you know, but everything you just shared is so true because one of the things um, that my wife and I hold so strongly is our job is to introduce people to Jesus and let him do the work. Let Jesus work within them. I can't change anybody. My words cannot convince you for permanent eternal change. But the presence of God, the love of Jesus in your heart is what my job is, is to introduce you to. And uh, people um, have a false recognition of what a, a follower of Jesus is. Um, uh, they, they, they say they look at you. And if you're not dotting every I and every T, they say, well, look at that. You know, you're supposed to be a follower of Jesus. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. Well, the only one that was a not supposed to that didn't do it. Uh, and, and a lot of things, Pastor, is not uh, on the outside, you know, like going back to the bar, going back to drugs or going back. And there's been people that have gone back to there because the devil's not going to give up, but then God brings them back. But it, right. it could be fear or anxiety or unforgiveness. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and the thing is, is that uh, we're all imperfect human beings, and we all struggle with that. And we all get situations and circumstances that come into our life that could be very detrimental, where the devil would have you think, well, if your God was, then how come this is happening? You know? Right. Do, do you have any of those situations that might have happened to you, Pastor, um, in your walk with the Lord, especially when you're a young believer now? You know, you're Absolutely. kind of doing the Lord, and he doesn't give up, you know. So if you have something, why don't you share a couple of those things that you might Yeah, think? one of the things, uh, the, after that experience and after accepting Christ, I stepped forward, to make a long story short, into my call, into ministry. I went to seminary, and during that time, um, I got married very young to my first wife. And... Uh, uh, through different things that have happened in life, we backslid a lot. Even here I am, a seminary graduate, um, master's in marriage and family counseling, master's in religious education, looking for a job in, a min in ministry, as uh, searching the Lord's heart. But we began to struggle uh, for, in various ways without going into details. And eventually my wife left me and divorced me at that time. I was so filled with the spirit of shame and guilt. I felt like I let God down. I felt like I let my family, my parents down. I was even afraid to share with my own mom and dad at that time. I was um, 24 years old uh, at that time, what was going on in my life. I was so filled with shame that I withdrew from the church completely. I struggled in my personal relationship with God. Um, I was just overwhelmed with that spirit of shame. That attacked and, me. And, and then my and, pride and, kept me. And, and Pastor, that's exactly what Satan does. 
Mm -hmm. um, he, 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 he gets situations in our, our life and he says, how can, you know, oh, oh, look what people will think, look what people will say. But a, as you know, the scripture, uh, uh, scripture says um, that uh, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy before him, uh, uh, you know, set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. So, so he took our shame upon him. He took our guilt upon him. As you know, basically what should happen is conviction through the Holy Spirit. And then you go back right on the way that it should be. But, but the devil wants people to draw away from the church, draw away from God, retreat, and then he gets you alone to you know, bombard your mind. And that's basically what you're saying. Uh, pastor is that you couldn't tell anybody so so you're, you're an island uh, but but no man can live this life as a believer as an island so how how did how did god work in, in your heart and your mind to to get you to understand that um if you confess your sin he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you mm -hmm. from all unrighteousness and just come back unto him well, I was so filled with what you just shared that I couldn't even take communion the first time I walked into a church. And um, a friend of mine at that point said, you need to speak with a minister that I know. So I, I met the former minister of our church, who is going to be with the Lord at this time, um, who became my mentor at that time. And he literally took me by the hand and would pray with me, would talk with me, would they hear me cry um, and would just walk with me to go before Jesus to just open my heart, repent and understand what the enemy was doing, the lies that he was feeding me, the deception that was going in my head and in my heart, telling me I can never be what God intended me to be because of this guilt and shame. And I'm so bad that I can never fulfill my call, my purpose. How dare you? Well, he walked me through that and showed me how to just simply say, Lord, I'm sorry I messed up, but you're the redeemer. You're the one who can restore everything. You restore what the locusts have eaten. What your word says, you build me back up. And just lay in my heart, confessing my sin, confessing the decisions I've made, the choices. I have to take personal responsibility for my choices and deal with the natural consequences that flow out of those choices. So I've had to deal with him. He walked me through every single one of those. And um, when I began to walk in his grace and I started to see myself the way he saw me, not the shameful sinner, but the redeemed saint, the, the person he intended when he first thought of me in his heart. And while I was, before I was in my mother's womb, I began to then step into my destiny and my call and the things that God had for me. So it was really uh, that gentleman that walked me through that time, repentance and restoration. And, and, and God always has uh, somebody in the wings. Mm -hmm. and, um, he, and he had the right man at the right time for the right purpose. And um, I'm sure, uh, Pastor, that because of what you went through, the situation now over the years you've been able to help somebody else who've gone through shame and situations and worked through them that way and and that that's a blessing uh for that has that happened in your ministry oh yeah constantly um because i i deal with a lot of christians who have struggled a lot of people who have struggled and and that's what they deal with they feel a sense of unworthiness and how can I get from where I am now to what you're talking about with Jesus? And it's not what you do. It's what Jesus does within you. It, all I have to do is say, yes, Lord, here I am before you. And let him then begin the, to use the Christianese, the sanctification process, but the work in me, the changing. And, and Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Yeah, uh, he, he 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 doesn't change, you know. The Lord's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but the devil for evil, 
is the same yesterday, today, yeah. and forever. He will be totally forever, you know, in the lake of fire. But the, the thing is, is that when he goes and he says, look at your servant there and look what he's done. The Lord says, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I just see the finished work at Calvary in, in, in Michael. I, I just see Christ in him. I, I don't look at the flesh. I, I look at who's in him and, and I'm in him. And, and so that's the, 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 the situation that believers need to know that the flesh is not what God looks at. He looks at the spirit. And, and, and as you know, in I think it's 2 Chronicles 16, 9, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro the earth to strengthen those whose heart is perfect towards him. Well, the reason why our hearts are perfect towards him because the perfect one lives in us. And so once you got on the right road in your mind, you must have felt a big weight lifted off your shoulders, Pastor. Yeah, um, I felt freedom like I've never felt before. But along with that freedom came a peace. And what the Lord also taught me is to love as he loves and to walk with him through the process because the victory that I will gain is not mine, but his working me through the process. So all of a sudden, things that were against me, things that were not working out in my life, he began to, one by one, as I can handle it, put pieces together and make my life begin to work and to be what he intended it to be. And joy was restored to me within that peace and that freedom and that purpose, really, as well. And, and, and the purpose is 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 not for you um, the purpose is for somebody else because um a, as believers uh we are alive today uh not because of our need but we are alive today because somebody else needs us and and and, and that's exactly what the lord has he has us to be a light for somebody in darkness. And, and there are a lot of people uh, that come to church, but but they haven't received the love of Jesus in their life because they're, they're kind of afraid uh, that because of their past life. Have, have you come up with people like that in your congregation, Pastor? Yeah, yeah. There are many people who are afraid to step into certain things because of what they've encountered in the past and the things that they've struggled with. But as you, we take them by the hand and as you walk them through and teach them how to walk with Jesus on their own as well, um, and to let him speak to them, to so hear from him, because we are created to host his presence and his spirit. That's what scripture tells us. So you can hear from God. God speaks to you. God can direct you. God can teach you. And as they do that, you begin to see their eyes open wider, their hearts open wider. They're taking steps into areas they never thought they would take before because faith is arising in them and they're trusting more. And they're beginning to believe that they can because of what God is doing in their life, that they can achieve all the things that um, they never thought they could. And one of the things that we really see a lot of is dreams and aspirations that you might have had when you were young and then the crud of the world came on you begin to come back up and the Lord begins to move them in them. And 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 basically it's new. Mm -hmm. And it's not relying on yourself. It's relying on the Lord. And once you bring to them the hope that expect it, uh, it's not a, well, maybe I'll get a job or maybe I'll get a girlfriend or maybe, I'll, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe. This is a sure thing. When, when we know that we have a God who died for us, a God who loves us, and a God who's coming back for us, and, and we have uh, eternal life with him, but we can walk with him here on earth. And that's exactly what the Lord wants us to realize that, you know, uh, through it all, we've learned to trust in Jesus. So 
Uh, and because we are believers, uh, that doesn't mean that life is a, 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 a beach and uh, it's not a, a rose garden. Um, is, is there some situations that you could share, one or two maybe, that we're kind of, in the, in the world, it would be your back would be up against the wall. But with, but with the Lord, he, he, he got us in the front and the rear, the cloud by day in the front mm -hmm. as the children of Israel and the fire by night in the back. Can you share a situation where it could have been really um, earth shattering, but God? Well, a lot, a lot of things that took place had to do with my personal call. God had been called, had called me to ministry right you know, at 16, 17 years old. And this incident that took place in my life deterred me from that in those moments and was taken away from what God had for me. And as he was rebuilding that, there were those obstacles and without getting into denominational things or, or, or political things in that manner, religious political things, um, there was issues about me being divorced. Can I be in the ministry? There was issues about me fulfilling that purpose. And I also had to accept the fact that God is calling me into it. I was willing to step a little bit as a volunteer, but not fully into it. And there was a lot of struggles that way in addition to how would this even work out for me? And, and what would my future look like within that? And I had a lot of doubt and a lot of reservation. I also had a lot of trauma, emotional trauma. And with these things that the Lord, you know, is still working through a lot of it as it comes up. I mean, he's our healer. He's the great physician. He's got Jehovah Rapha. So he's still healing any little bit of wounds left. So those things have come against me in a lot of ways. Um, even the situation that I am in, I'm in, I'm living in New Jersey. My whole family is in Texas. And the Lord has kept me here for a reason. And I would say, why? All my support system is in another place you know my family is there why am i here and the lord had me here to walk me through these things to be an overcomer to show me his faithfulness and how his love for me is just everlasting and unfailing and he is literally taking me by the hand and every obstacle from getting credentialed and licensed and ordained in the ministry to even meeting somebody in the future because you know one of the things the enemy plays on you is will you ever meet anyone again fall in love like that again and the lord brought me the perfect person for me in my life so there was a lot of doubt a lot of uh struggles that i went through and his faithfulness is just so great so enduring and, and his mercies are new every morning and, and 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 great is his faithfulness. And uh, basically, uh, if there's an individual like yourself uh, who's working a secular job mm -hmm. and has to go to uh, New Jersey to work this job and the whole family's left alone in Texas, they don't have any they don't have any peace. They don't have any joy. They, they don't have any hope uh, because they're, they're separated from uh, their, their their loved ones, their support as a non-believer. But as a believer, as you just said, Pastor, you have a peace, you have a joy, you have a faith because you know it's not about you. It's about God. And, 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 and you never know. I mean, next year, next week, next month, God might just call you back to Texas to open up a church or something like that and be with your family. But what you have been doing, a Pastor, you've been steadfast, unmovable, and you've been always abounding in your calling, the work of the Lord, and your labor is not in vain. And and, and, and so uh, he, here it is where you're, you're, you're just doing what God says to do for other people's purpose. So is there something that you could just share Pastor, uh, to the audience, uh, there might be people there that are uh, well, backslidden. That means that you just kind of fell away from what you're doing and, and going into situations, circumstances that you shouldn't have been. But uh, and maybe you might just have um, some some people there that, that, that are not believers, but they're at the end of their rope. 
and 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 the, the, because of the world that we're living in and this country, you have something to share with them, please. The lie of the enemy is that you are too far from God, and God can't reach you. When He literally is right behind you, just waiting for you to turn to Him. He's right there. You are never ever too far from God. You are never ever too far from His love. He. He still loves you, even though you may not love yourself. The word of God says, while we were yet sinners, he loved us. You are He cannot love you more than he already is in love with you because God is love. He is the essence of love. So he is already maxed out in his mad love for you, even the way you are now. And he's just waiting for you to say, come. Uh, I, I want to be embraced by your love, to allow him to embrace you by his love. All you have to do is turn around and say, Jesus, here I am. Come, help me, love me. Uh, it, it's that literally that simple and that easy to do because he's right there already willing to jump and pour his love into you and bring restoration immediately, bring hope, bring peace. Uh, bring life back to what you thought were dead, things in your life that you're dead, uh, were gone, that you'll never achieve again, you'll never have again, you'll never be able to attain. He, he is so merciful and so loved. It can happen just like that with just a thing yet to him. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a try, Jesus. Come into my heart. The scripture that comes to me, Pastor, is Romans chapter 8, verse 6. To be carnally minded is death. And that's basically what it is. A people without Christ, you're walking death. It's like you're in like you're in a grave because there is no hope uh, in this world and situations. But to be uh, spiritually minded is, is life and peace. And, and that's what you were talking about. That, that when we're spiritually minded, we have a life, a new life in Christ and peace. And, and because of that, we know that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above and beyond all we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. And when, when we get to a point where we stop thinking over here with our carnal mind, and we believe in our heart what the scripture says, then we're given permissions for God to move. Um, do, do you have any situations where you had somebody come up to you and say, thank you, pastor? Like when you had that young, uh, when you were young, you had that pastor do that to you. Is there somebody you could think of that was just, thank you, pastor, for what you did? One of the most profound moments that I've, ever had and we still have this connection as many years ago we were uh, doing a worship service on the beach in new jersey uh, in south jersey and a young woman came up to me who was about to commit suicide that night but based on the things that we shared um she didn't and to this day she is great and living her life for jesus and, and pastor Thank you so much for coming on the show and, and sharing your testimony. And um, Jesus said, go out into all the world, you know, not in the church. You are on the beach, right? And 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 because of that, she didn't kill herself. So we got to keep going out. We, we, you know, we obey Christ. Uh, you know, we obey the land of the living, the God almighty. And he says to go out into the land and to give people life. So thank you, Pastor, for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, well, what more can I say? You've heard Pastor talking about his conversion to Christ and how it changed his life and how he's going out with people and they're just sharing the gospel and people are coming to Christ like him. Hopefully you'll do that. Thank you for watching our broadcast today. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole wide world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain. In his hands, he's got the
He's got 